morning everybody welcome to our service it's good to be with you for the first time in 2021 i hope that you're well and enjoying the sunshine if you've been for a walk this morning you're a better man or woman than me but i hope you enjoyed the uh, bracing air and it's good to be able to come together this morning with you all wherever you are and worship god together i wish we weren't just meeting only meeting online this morning that we were able to meet in some of our buildings but due to the lockdown that all of us are dealing with together it seems appropriate to me that we meet online only at the moment and so I hope that you'll join with me in uh, seeking God with everything that we have both today and in the weeks and months ahead that we might continue to grow in our faith and our love for God and our love for one another and our love for the community that God has called us to live in and to serve together. As we come to worship this morning, let's pray. Father, thank you for your love for us, your goodness to us, your kindness to us. Thank you for the new opportunity that this new day and its mercies bring to us to recognize that we are your children, that we are loved and cherished by you. And to remember that everybody else around us, whether they realize it or not, is loved and cherished by you and important to you. We come to worship you this morning because you are good and your love endures forever because you are holy. There is none more holy than you because you are beautiful, because you are love. There would be no love without you, God. And so we gladly praise you and set aside this time in our day to focus solely on you. Would you accept this, our sacrifice of praise this morning, I pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now we'll sing our first song for this morning. I stand amazed.
God, we praise you for your marvellous and wonderful love for us. We thank you that you came to be our saviour, our king and our friend. And we thank you that from this day forwards, this moment forwards, you invite us to walk with you, to follow your ways, to do your things in the power of of the Spirit and in union with Christ to your glory. We give ourselves to you once again this morning and say would you take our lives and use them for your purposes God. In Jesus name, Amen. If you've not joined us for a service online before you're especially welcome if this is your first experience of Emmanuel. You're really welcome. If this is your first experience of God, you're really welcome. Especially welcome if that's the case. If you've come this morning with something to celebrate, then please do let us know in the comments. It's always good to have good news to share, especially at the moment where good news, if you only listen to the news and the newspapers, seems to be in short supply. Do let us know. If you've come with a need or a request for prayer for a, a person, a place or a situation, then again, do let us know. We'll do our best to keep up with those as we're going along. And uh, if it's your birthday, then I'm especially gravelly voiced, as is often the way on a Sunday morning. And so I'd love to sing happy birthday to you, along with my wife this morning, whose birthday it was on Friday. Uh, later on in the service. Again, do let us know in the comments. It would be great to share in that celebration as well. What is a lockdown birthday for, if not for being able to be sung to on the internet, I ask. When we come into knowledge of God's presence, when we know that God is with us, whether it's through singing or praying, or just listening to me chattering on like this, we're still in God's presence even though I'm wittering on. One of the things that we become aware of if we stop and think and pray is just how great God is, how wonderful He is. And that even though He loves us and we're special to Him and cherished by Him, we regularly don't live up to the kinds of lives that we would live if we were living God's best way. And so it's important for us, whenever we gather together, to take a few moments to pause and to pray, and to offer ourselves to God once again in confession and to receive again knowledge of his forgiveness and the opportunity that we're given for a, a new start, a new life with him. And so, we're going to keep silence for just a few moments, asking God to point out to us the things that he would like us to bring to him this morning before we join in a prayer of confession together. Let's pray.
and we say together the words that will appear on the screen. Almighty God, long-suffering and of great goodness, I confess to you, I confess with my whole heart my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts I have done to others and the good I have left undone. O oh God, forgive me, for I have sinned against you and raise me to newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen indeed. This morning our theme is the visiting of the wise men to Jesus and his family as we celebrate what's called Epiphany in the church. It was the day of Epiphany on January the 6th on Wednesday. It's important for us to mark how the wise men recognised Jesus as King and Saviour and they brought gifts to him and James Fernley will be sharing with us from that story later on in our service. But for now, I'm going to hand over to Joe Pearson, who has a poem to share with us on that subject this morning. Good morning. T.S. Eliot's famous poem, The Journey of the Magi, was written in 1927. Hayden has found this new version by Don Dowling, which brings the story right up to date. The Journey of the Magi Revisited So we got there, eventually, delayed by issues at the border crossings, strip searches, sniffer dogs, suspicious officials flanked by hard-eyed young men toting guns. They questioned us, were we smugglers? Might the costly spices we'd brought as gifts be banned substances? And what of the gold? Was it to finance arms smuggling, insurrection or business bribes? Did we stick by this cock and bull story about following a star? Why didn't we use sat-navs? Why this obsession with astrology? A star portending the birth of a Jewish ruler? That alone nearly got us arrested. But they let us go. Their racial prejudices trumped by their conviction that we were harmless crazies bent on a wild goose chase. Finally, we reached Journey's End despite that last unnerving interview with Herod, honey-tongued but with ill-disguised murder seething in his eyes. Was it all worth it to discover by starlight a poor couple's boy child in a tiny shack? Well, let me say this, on our first entering in, we glimpsed majesty in his piercing gaze, an awesome moment, compelling worship. He needed no court flunkies, no smooth-talking press secretary, no trumpets, hype or cameras. A human child, he manifested a wisdom welling from the depths of the eternal silence. Here, we sensed, we had touched divinity. Now, for us, life would never be the same. Home we went another way, 
and found another life. Thank you so much to Joe for that, for reading it so beautifully. A nice alternative take on the visit of the wise men to Jesus. Here's our first Bible reading for this morning. It's from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3, beginning at the beginning, because that's a good place to start. Beloved friends, because of my love for Jesus Christ, I am now his prisoner for the sake of all of you who are not Jews, so that you will hear the gospel that God has entrusted to me to share with you. For this wonderful mystery, which I briefly described, was given to me by divine revelation, so that whenever you read it, you will be able to understand my revelation and insight into the secret mystery of the Messiah. There has never been a generation that has been given the detailed understanding of this glorious and divine mystery until now. He kept it secret until this generation. God is revealing it only now to his sacred apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit. Here's the secret. The gospel of grace has made you non-Jewish believers into co-heirs of his promise through your union with him and you have now become members of his body one with the anointed one i have been made a messenger of this wonderful news by the gift of grace that works through me even though i am the least significant of all his holy believers this grace gift was imparted when the manifestation of his power came upon me Grace alone empowers me so that I can boldly preach this wonderful message to non-Jewish people, sharing with them the unfailing, inexhaustible riches of Christ, which are beyond comprehension. My passion is to enlighten every person to this divine mystery. It was hidden for ages past until now, and kept a secret in the heart of God, the Creator of all. The purpose of this was to unveil before every throne and rank of angelic orders in the heavenly realm God's full and diverse mystery, wisdom revealed through the church. This perfectly wise plan was destined from eternal ages and fulfilled completely in our Lord Jesus Christ, so that now we have boldness through him and free access as kings before the Father because of our complete confidence in Christ's faithfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sorry for tripping over a couple of words there. I think they make the print in Bibles smaller with every passing year. Now, if you have a church craft pack, it's time to fish it out and get ready. We hand over to Chrissy for this week's craft activity. And in today's two Bible readings, we look at how God can make things that are done through him even bigger and better. So there's two events. We look at um, the when the wise men or the kings go to visit baby Jesus with his presence. But we also look at a bit of the Bible where Paul tells us how through God's power, he, the least of all people, can do amazing things. So we're going to look at how we can make something bigger and better today in our craft. We're going to make something called a pantograph. Rich, can you read the first step for me, please? I don't know what a pantograph is, but it sounds jolly exciting. Okay, step one. Use a split pin to attach the two long strips of card together. Then use two more split pins to attach the short strips to the long strips. So, so if you've got a craft pack, I've already put the holes in the right places for you to make it really easy. So this is my split pin and I'm pushing it through one and then the other and then pushing the ends flat like that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And I'm going to do the same 
with the little ones. Now the little ones need to go into the middle of the big sections. Okay. Here we go. So through the hole and then through the middle hole. Those holes are already made for you if you've got a craft back, so it should be nice and easy. And that is step one done. Okay. Okay, would you like to read step two, Richard? Step two, right. Attach one long slide to the big bit of card using the split pin, and then tape the big bit of paper underneath the long arm and the small bit of the paper under the small arm. So, I just so I'm just going to make a little hole with a pencil. This is the one that I didn't put in. So just in a random bit of just cardboard? Just in the middle. They've got a big piece of cardboard in oh, their right. craft packs, Rich, you see. Okay. So, but I just didn't think to put the hole in that one. So I'm going to poke my split pin through the hole here and then through this hole which wasn't made as quite as expertly as the others, so it will need a bit of fiddling. Here we go. There we go. And that's through. So now we've got this weird contraption here. But to make it work, we need to have some paper in the right place. So where these two join, I need to take the small piece of paper about there. OK, so. Using the bit of sellotape now. Now I'm using sellotape again. I've given you a reel just like this in your craft pack. It's really so. easy to uh, get the end of the sellotape <laughs> off as well. You know, if I'd thought about it in advance, Rich, I would have done that before we started, but I didn't think today. There you go. There, there it comes. There it comes. So. Uh, sticky tape, not sellotape. It's, it's, it's sticky tape, not sellotape. Oh, it's not sellotape, not, not, not really on my budget, no. Here we go. And then the big bit of paper. Well, here we go, I've got a big go piece of paper now. The, the, where the long arm will fit, which is here. I think you basically have to take this down as well. I guess once you've done this one, you can draw anything with this, can't you? Once you, you, you can just untake things. these two bits of paper and take new bits on, yes, completely. Okay, so step, step three. three. Okay, step three. So attach one felt tip pen to the two short strips and another to the long strip. If you draw with the short strip, pen the picture will draw on the layer with the long strip pen. Okay, so Smile I'm just that. gonna right. use my pencil right. just to make this hole Pencil. a little bit bigger. So we're making a bigger hole. With so we make a little side. bit of a bigger hole and then we're gonna shove, we want quite a nice tight fit, our pen into that hole. And again, you've got these felt tip pens in your craft they kit. Come in your craft bag. They come in your craft bag. And again, I'll just make this hole a little bit bigger to make it easier. And I'll push this pen in. I get the impression this whole enterprise okay. is sponsored by the craft pack. But right, so here we go. What shall I draw, Rich? A Christmas tree. A Christmas tree. Okay, so as I draw my little Christmas tree in my own strength here, it's drawn even bigger and better <gasps> Look at that. by like the strength magic. of the pantograph to remind us that in God's strength we can make things bigger and better. Well, I'm impressed. Thanks to Chrissy. Even with that marvellous explanation and demonstration, I'm pretty sure uh, that I would fail if I tried to do that. So if you manage to complete that craft activity this week, you're definitely more crafty than me. And I would love uh, to see a picture of the work that you managed to put in to make that happen and get that done. Do send them in to us. And if you'd like, we can put them on the website and show them to people in services in the future. We're going to sing once again now our second song, In Christ Alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, 
Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone Who took on flesh Born as a God in helpless babe This gift of love And righteousness Scorned by the ones He came to say, till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on Him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. So Lord, all the days of our life, would you help us to stand in your power and with you that we might live through that power, live for you and point people to you that they might too know that life comes in Christ alone. Thank you, Father, that we know that truth, that you revealed it to us, just as you revealed it through Jesus and through Paul, whose words we heard earlier on. Help us as we listen to your word again now to be awake and alert to what you are saying to us through it and through Chris and James this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now over to Chris as he brings us our second Bible reading for today. The reading is from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star as it arose, and we have come to worship him. 
Herod was deeply disturbed by their question, as was all Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law. Where did the prophet say the Messiah would be born? He asked them. In Bethlehem, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. O oh, Bethlehem of Judah, you are not just a lowly village in Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod sent a private message to the wise men, asking them to come and see him. At this meeting, he learned the exact time when they first saw the star. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way. Once again, the star appeared to them, guiding them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house where the child and his mother Mary were, and they fell down before him and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. But when it was time to leave, they went home another way, because God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Bible reading for Epiphany last Wednesday gave two primary lessons, Matthew 2, 1 to 12, the story of the Magi's visit, and Ephesians 3, 1 to 12, Paul talking about how salvation is also for the Gentiles. For those that don't know, the word Gentile roughly means people who are not Hebrew, or non-Jew. Me and you. Not a child of Abraham, a person from the rest of the world outside Israel. It interested me that the lecturing makers had drawn a direct con connection between the verse in Ephesians and the nativity story of the wise men. Therefore I decided to look at the Ephesians verses in the context of the Magi's visit looking at a few verses through that story to see what they tell us about God's plan for us. Starting with verse 1. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for the sake of you Gentiles. Two groups of people came to see Jesus at his birth. The first group of people are the shepherds. Now I think shepherds have actually got a bit of a bad press in the last few years around Christmas time. It's been fashionable for speakers to talk about shepherds as being criminals and outcasts. However, I've not been convinced that the biblical or historical evidence actually bears that out. But just consider, if that was really the perception of all shepherds at the time, would Jesus really have referred to himself as the Good Shepherd? For that matter, as the father of the nation, David, had himself been a shepherd, and we have all the Old Testament readings on God being a shepherd and Israel being his flock. Not to mention that the early church leaders were called shepherd, e.g. pastor. I'm not sure convinced it's true that everybody automatically thought shepherd equals criminal. However, what is probably right and correct is that shepherd would have represented a job that di differentiated somebody as being in a particular social grouping or class, a factory worker, a miner, a call centre attendant. Solid, honest work, salt of the earth, never a boss or a lord. Now I think that these two groups were chosen as saying something about the breadth of who Jesus is coming for. One of them was perceived as low in society, the other was the kings. Hang on, that can't be right, can it? It's interesting that despite it not being in the scripture, we call them three kings. For anybody who has only ever heard the nativity and not read the Bible story itself, the Bible uses the word magi to describe the kings and never gives a number. A magi was a foreigner, probably from somewhere near Iraq, but there's a few other places I might have been from. 
They worshipped a pantheon or many gods and watched the stars to try to tell the future. So a more correct name for the three kings could be the foreign, heathen, non-God saved, sorcerers who came to see Jesus. Those who were not of God's people, but from another country, not in God's covenant, who were actively carrying out practices such as astrology that are in direct opposition to it. Two groups were identified as coming to see Jesus, possibly hinting in this first chapter of Matthew who the Christ was coming for. The shepherds, the lowest of the low, and the Gentiles, you, me, and the rest of the world. Not currently in the covenant, instead actively rebelling against it. Verse 6 of, of the Ephesians verse. This mystery is that, that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body and sharers together in the promise in Jesus Christ. So what does it mean that the Magi came to see Jesus? Was that an early symbol of who the ministry of the Christ would be aimed towards? The visit of the Magi was a symbol of a broader integration of the Gentiles into the covenant. Up till that point, salvation was just for the Jews. Jesus was the Messiah. The assumption had been that he would be an earthly Messiah, come to save the Jewish kingdom, raise war to restore the temple, and to put God's people back on top. Instead, the shepherd and the Gentile were going to be added into God's people, members of one body, all pulled together. Those who were in the kingdom, those who already walked with God, and those at the time who did not, all come together and lay gifts before the Messiah. Verse 12. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. So what does that mean for us? Before Jesus, the only people who could come to God were the chosen few. Our shepherd and Gentile were not previously chosen. They were the everybody else outside the plan. But they turned up to be the king who was born in a stable, not in a palace. Despite being outsiders and foreigners, And now also we can all approach God with freedom. This means we can approach God in the same way. We can come and worship. Though we are rabble, we are welcome in the holy places. Because through faith in him, everybody can approach him with freedom. Just like the sinful foreign magi. Thank you to James for a powerful message to us from God's word this morning. How are we going to respond to being invited to follow God in his ways? How are you going to respond today, this week, this month, this year? One of the greatest gifts that we have when we become Christians is that we can pray. And we know that when we pray, God hears and answers our prayers. And so I'm going to hand over to Precious in just a moment and she'll lead us in our prayers of intercession for this morning. If you have a particular prayer request, do let us know in the comments and I'll add to Precious's prayers if there's a need when she is concluded. Let's pray. Let us pray. Father, we are drawn to your feet in worship, hearts laid bare by your light, humbly asking for your mercy. We come to you as a people in need of assurance and forgiveness. We come as a people in need of healing and wholeness. We come dependent on your love. Draw us close, enfold us in your arms, fill us with your spirit that we might reflect your light, that we might speak your word and that we might draw others to your feet. 
Your majesty is beyond our imagination. Your power is beyond our understanding. We don't deserve your mercy. But we thank you that you give it freely. We pray for wisdom and we ask that you be the centre of all that we are. You have gifted your church through the goodness of your grace to be your hands, to do your work, to be your voice and share your word and to bring healing. You have gifted your people with the blessings of your spirit. Now may our hearts receive and our mouths proclaim. May our hands be prepared to serve that the love that we have known might overflow and fill the lives of others. Loving God, it's because of you that we, your people, gather, seeking your presence, your comfort, and your love. In this epiphany season, shine your light deep into our hearts, into those places where we may experience anxiety, depression, fear, and despair. We lift all who are grieving at the moment. In particular, we think of Beryl Law and her family as they prepare to lay Robin to rest. We pray for Chris Pearson, Simon Burgess, Pat Harvey, Ken and Kay Clark, Ralph Thompson, Tracy Barford, Caroline Giles, Terry, Mike Maddox and his family, and Chris Johnson. God of grace and healing, we lift all these dear souls to you. Father, we ask that you will shine your light into those places of conflict and tension. May your light be a healing balm, bringing forgiveness and reconciliation. God of connection, shine your light into the ties that bind us together. Remind us that you have created all of us in your image, unique and loved by you. God of power, and mercy, shine your light upon our nation and its leaders, that they may govern justly and wisely. God of compassion and peace, shine your light on all the places around the world where there is violence and war. God of goodness, Shine your light on us and help us to be your light in the world. Amen. Lord, we pray along with Precious's prayers for Henry Southgate's father. Would you bring him the healing that he he needs I pray in Jesus name we pray for Ken and for Kay for Charlene and hate be with them as they're unwell be with those who are caring for them I pray we pray for Ethiopia as a nation for Tigray in particular bringing before you the story shared by Sally this morning. 
Would you bring peace in that country and in that region, I pray. Would you call Christians to pray without ceasing for a turning of the tide? And would you call us too to stand for justice and all that makes for peace? Help us to have courage to speak up for those who to contact those in power and authority and strongly encourage them to do something to bring about a change in Ethiopia today. And we pray too for places unknown to us, not in our news, but yet suffering the blight of poor people being treated unjustly, the blight of war and a lack of peace. We know that these things grieve you, Father, and would you help us to see through your eyes those people and places around the world who were not treated fairly, or rightly, or justly, and would you help us to stand for good for all in the way that your Son Jesus taught us and invites us to. And we pray too for every school in our parish and in Northampton facing such unheard of circumstances at the moment. Thank you for each head teacher and senior leadership team member working so hard to bring about the possibility of home learning for many students and pupils. We pray for those pupils who don't have access to technology, that something would happen to bring that about. We pray for those whose homes are not calm and quiet, where there's not space for people to have a room to themselves, to learn or to work. We pray for parents and guardians and carers taking on the role of teachers when they were least expecting to do so. And we pray for those who set policy and procedure that they would think of all people when they do so. Give us wisdom to know how to respond in these days of coronavirus and lockdown. Help us to think of others as well as ourselves in all that we do. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now we're going to share together in a prayer that joins us in saying what we believe, not just on our own, but as a whole church together. I'll ask some questions and you respond with the words in bold. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In drawing all our prayers together, we share in the Lord's Prayer in the more modern version. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue to pray for those yet to receive a coronavirus vaccine, giving thanks to 
for all those who've received at least one dose so far. Thanking God that so much work has been done so fast. What a wonderful piece of good news that is. A couple of notices to share with you this morning. Joe's writing notes to me all the time as I'm trying to uh, talk. <laughs> Our Money Support Centre launches this Wednesday. Please pray for the Money Support Centre in the days ahead. In these most challenging of times for many people as work is coming to an end, jobs are being lost and uh, money is tighter than many people have ever known it before. Seems a good time to launch a money support centre. Paul Foster is working exceptionally hard with a team of dedicated volunteers to make that happen in partnership with Edge Ministries. It starts on Wednesday of this coming week. Please do remember to pray in the days ahead. Let's pray for the Money Support Centre now. Father, thank you that you have made for such a time as this our work supporting people in their financial issues through a new Money Support Centre. I pray that the launch would go well on Wednesday, that Paul and his team would flourish in that work, that they would enjoy doing it, and that the people they meet would not only receive help with their finances, but that they would see something of your love and your life in the people they speak to, and that lives would be transformed and turned around through this work. Bless Paul, especially as he coordinates everything. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There are dozens of birthdays to share with you this morning. But before we get to that, just one notice. Starting on the 18th of January, so a week tomorrow, we're going to gather together on a Monday evening at 7.30 on Zoom to pray. If times like these don't call us to pray, then I don't think anything ever will. And so I think it's important at the start of this year that we prioritise prayer. However you like to pray, whether you prefer to pray on your own at home or if you're comfortable praying in a group in what is commonly called a prayer meeting, whatever works for you. But if you would like to gather together to pray, then from the 18th of January at 7.30pm, there'll be a Zoom meeting to pray. Of course, everyone loves Zoom meetings, but I think this one will be especially important. Helps us to get in line with what God's priorities are and see people and places transformed for his glory. What could be better than that? There's several other comments of things that people have asked us to pray for and about this morning as well that have gone on down the side of the service. Do Keep an eye on those and pray for those people and places and situations in the days ahead. And if you've never received our weekly prayer sheet, this might be a good time to start. Do get in touch either through this page or email the church office and we can set you up with that. So then, birthdays. Here we go. We've got Bloom. And Kath and Joanne and somebody else who's Hope. So Bloom and Kath and Joanne and Hope. Also Andrew and Joe, who sat next to me and has been very chatty this morning. And Rachel. So Bloom and Kath, Joanne, Hope, Andrew, Joe, and Rachel. My recommendation strongly given is that you pick one out of Bloom and Kath, Joanne and Hope, Andrew, Joe and Rachel and you sing just to them. Between however many of us there are watching this this morning, everyone will be covered. Let's sing. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, 
Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. God's blessings on you. God's blessings on you. God's blessings on Joe so I don't get in trouble. God's blessings on you. We made it. Did you get through that? Okay, everybody. Well done. We're going to sing one closing song together. We said the creed or a version of the creed just now, affirming what we believe. And as we go out into the week ahead, into these days of lockdown, which for many are full of uncertainty and questions, and for some a great deal of fear, it does us good to know what we, we believe why we believe it, to remind ourselves of those things and to remember that more than just words, we believe in God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, God the Son sent to save his people, God the Spirit sent to guide God's people and God the Father who loves us better than any earthly parent ever could. Let's sing This I Believe.
there's power in the name of Jesus. And I hope and pray that in the days ahead, that power would bless you in your life so that you can be a blessing to whoever you get the opportunity to spend time with, whether that's on the phone, on Zoom, on your daily exercise with only one other human person or something like that. I've no idea what the rules are at the moment. But as we're keeping safe and staying home, God is active. The word of God is living and active, still changing lives, still bringing new life where there was no life before. And we're invited to be the agents of change and transformation as we live and move and have our being in God and in the power of the Spirit. I really want to encourage you this week find ways to be bold and confident as we live out our faith together as a church and individually. God is good. God is love. We have everything we need to get through this lockdown and beyond and to see added to our number daily many people as they're saved. I truly believe that. Let's be bold together a prayer of blessing as we close. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a wonderful few days. We'll be back here on Wednesday with a communion service and also with a short service of prayer and reflection at 7pm on the Emmanuel Facebook page. And next Sunday at 10.30, join us once again as we worship God together. Have a great few days. I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Goodbye.